This weekend marks one year since the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade. The decision returned the power to regulate abortion to the states. Well, that had an immediate impact in Tennessee, Mississippi, and Arkansas, whose legislatures passed trigger laws that made abortion illegal with few or no exceptions weeks after the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade. Choices Center for Reproductive Health, based in Memphis, has since opened a clinic in Carbondale, Illinois. We learned this week that clinic took in more than 2,000 thousand patients, the vast majority from the Mid-South. Planned Parenthood of Tennessee and North Mississippi said also said it's doing its part for access. I'm proud of the way Planned Parenthood has stepped up thanks to our amazing staff. We're providing patient navigation services along with direct financial assistance where we're doing everything we can to help patients get the abortion care they need when they need it. Well, Tennessee Right to Life shared a different opinion on the anniversary, estimating the overturning of Roe in the volunteer state impacted 10,000 children who were born. President Stacy Dunn said, We are celebrating that with the Dobbs decision, our Tennessee law now reflects our Tennessee values and protects the right of life of our most vulnerable citizens. These events will allow pro-life Tennesseans to celebrate Dobbs and to recommit ourselves to working for a day when abortion is not only illegal, but unthinkable. Well, Deidre, we start with you. How do you think both sides in the Mid-South have adjusted one year after? Because obviously Planned Parenthood had to adjust. Pro-life's kind of taken a victory lap one year. How do you think this has just changed the calculus? Well, I don't think there has been a real adjustment. I think that what it has done, though, it has opened a lot of women's eyes to the fact that, and some men, that um, health care for women is under attack across this country. and. We need to do something about it. And so more women are looking at opportunities to run for office, which I think is great um, because it's just, it's like the handmade tales. If you've seen that show at all, it's unbelievable. And so um, I don't think anybody's settled in and the, those proponents that consider themselves pro-life, I think they need to watch out because pro-choice women are coming. And as a follow-up, uh, part of that news conference uh, this past week from Planned Parenthood and Choices, we're talking about, you know, the closing of clinics goes far beyond abortion. It it's, does. It's health care. It's, it's health care for women. I, I think about the woman in Texas who um, was pro-life and then she became preg pregnant and had an atopic pregnancy and they made her carry that child, her life was in danger. And so, you know, until she could go and, and have um, an abortion. It's just unfortunate that 10 year olds that may be raped or, uh, you know, assaulted, sexually assaulted, may have to carry a child if they don't have an opportunity to have, you know, this life-changing procedure. So it's unfortunate, but what it has done, it has made women across this country think, and some men, that we've got a lot of work to do when it comes to state laws. And Sam, I know you primarily focus on city council, but, you know, thinking about the big presidential election of 2024, how do you think this might play out as being maybe one of the issues that could galvanize people to the polls on both sides? Well, it's already starting to show up in the Iowa caucuses, right? The, uh, in, the, in the Republican primary, you know, a lot of candidates are being asked what their opinion is and would they back a nationwide abortion ban, right? And so that, that sort of, to be honest, to, to Deidre's point and I think to the broader conversation, you know, not in a partisan way, but this is probably, I'm 30 years old in my lifetime, and maybe I'm forgetting something in the 90s here, <laughs> but it's gotta be the most impactful Supreme Court decision of my lifetime, for I sure. I have a couple years in you, I agree, mm -hmm. it's, it's huge. And, and, it's, and it, you're seeing, like, you're sitting thousands of women across state lines, right? And so I think, like, has it really changed how many, you know, I would question the right to life statement a little right. bit of, like, how many babies were born or how many more abortions were just done across state lines or illegally or and I'm not accusing anyone of anything but like I think that really is and I think it also to Deidre's point has galvanized I mean it blunted a red wave in the congressional electorate last fall it really blunted I mean in a bad economy mm -hmm. the incumbent president's party is not supposed to do well in a midterm election right. statistically they did a lot better I and mean, it's a lot to do with that Supreme Court decision and you see what happened in Kansas not exactly a blue state and right. they really re, you know reaffirmed that so I think you'll see more of it and going from the national back to the state level, do you, I know obviously Tennessee has a supermajority, but do you think in the upcoming elections this issue could 
chip away at the supermajority? I, I think a little bit. You know, uh, I'm the president of the National Women's Political Caucus of Tennessee right now. And women are calling me and, and members of my organization talking about running for state legislature. So I know women are getting excited about trying to figure out how to take some of these legislators out. Um, and is that a, the top issue they usually talk to you about among major, the top? Oh, major issue, number one issue right now, absolutely. A, women's right, a woman's right to choose. All right, well yeah. that's all the time we have um, for today.